I'm thrilled to be joined by Jane Daly. Jane has been working in the professional arts, primarily theatre, for 35 years and is the co-director of the Irish Theatre Institute. Jane, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, it's a pleasure and thanks for asking me. Of course. So I'm just going to get uh, stuck in. Um, can you tell us about the journey to your current role at the ITI? 35 years is a long, a long journey to cover, but um, very, very quickly, um, I, I actually wanted to be a museum curator. But um, a couple of experiences I had in theatres when I was when I was much younger, one of which included seeing Judy Dench and Ian McKellen perform uh, the leads in the Scottish play um, influenced me uh, in terms of the power and the experience of live performance. So um, when I when I left college where I'd done a classics and history degree, I ended up doing an arts administration course. And from that, um, I, I met a range of different people through that programme. It was a very practical programme rather than academic. And um, out of that, I ended up finding a pathway into festivals first and later into theatre. And um, I've spent the majority of my working life um, in theatre, definitely in the performing arts, but primarily in the theatre sector, both as a producer uh, in a funding uh, organisation, the Arts Council at one point, and latterly um, working with Siobhan Burke, who's the co-director of Irish Theatre Institute, and we would have been contemporaries. And we were both at a similar career stage in the late 90s, and we ended up joining forces and we developed the Irish Theatre Institute as a resource organisation for Irish theatre. I love that uh, it was Judy Dench and Ian McKellen that inspired you. That's, I'm sure they've I know, inspired a lot of people to, to enter into the, the theatre world. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, Jane, what resources are available for theatre makers when they contact the Irish Theatre Institute? It's kind of a, um, we like to think of it as kind of as a progressive uh, series of, of steps you can make when you engage with Irish Theatre Institute in, in the first inst instance. And we, we, we deal or work with artists and we're there for theatre artists and to some extent uh, arts workers, uh, both at the kind of early, it, they have to be professional, but from kind of early career stage, entry level, if you like, through emerging mid-career and established and there'll be different range of services and opportunities depending on your career stage. So maybe your first introduction to us might be through one of our information clinics. We have a, a, a service whereby you can contact us via our website um, and come and talk to us for an hour or so about a particular issue that you, you want to get information on. The, we usually used to charge a membership, uh, a, a subscription, if you like, for 25 euro for a year, unlimited number of, of uh, clinics. Um, but we've waived that fee at the moment, given that artists don't have uh, the clippings of tin, as they say. And uh, we, we didn't want to have to charge anybody during this period. So the, diff the good thing about the information clinic is that you set the agenda. So if you want to know something about how to access funding, if you want to learn how, about venues or festivals in your area and how you might be uh, able to get your work presented there, if you want to learn how to network, how to do a budget, um, how to make connection with other artists, you can come and talk to us. We can do them online or when things are back to normal or some kind of normal, you can come and uh, visit us in ITI if you're, if you're Dublin based. So we then out of that um, do projects like um, duets, which is the next stage of the show in a bag project that we've done that we did over a number of years, nine, I think 10 years maybe with Fish Amble and Dublin Fringe, where we um, resourced uh, independent artists to make their own work and to create a show in a bag, um, which, which really was to give them ownership over their own work, encourage them both maybe to write it, perform in it and to produce it. And many of those uh, projects have been extremely successful and have won Edinburgh uh, Fringe Firsts and have toured nationally and internationally. And uh, Culture Ireland has been very supportive of that work. The interesting thing about that one is it came out of the recession. 
um, because lots of theatre companies had closed down and um, people were starting to work together. So these art three organisations did that and it was about empowering artists to make their own work and to earn from it. So I imagine that there will be a number of new initiatives will come out of the, the COVID pandemic impact as well. Um, because, as you know, in a crisis, uh, artists and organisations get particularly creative. Um, and then we would have a range of other pro uh, programmes like Six in the Attic, which is one of our calling cards, which is where we offer uh, usually kind of more emerging or mid-career artists access to workspace for a year long period, uh, coupled with a series of uh, mentoring um, programmes. Um, and small bursaries to help them in their professional development. We run a program called Prime for uh, older performers, which we do in uh, conjunction with Age and Opportunity. Um, and so we, we, if you like, try to uh, identify what the needs are for independent artists in the sector. And then we roll out bespoke programs in some cases or more generic uh, services but ultimately to give people access to information, building a community, how to actually establish themselves and um, to not feel that they're working in isolation, I suppose. So it's a range of things that all goes into one big melting pot. Jane, you mentioned about the information clinics that you provide. Am I right in saying that you had one last Friday that you, the Irish Theatre Institute hosted along with Theatre Forum? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that um, and what came out of it? Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was actually a really uh, exciting thing for us in ITI to do because um, there, there are, Theatre Forum is our sister resource organisation. Irish Theatre Institute is focused primarily on providing supports and resources for artists and for art form development. And Theatre Forum works very much in the uh, area of working with the art centres, um, with our organisations and in terms of looking after industry issues like benchmarking salaries, looking at, they've been fabulous in terms of the whole pro, um, protocols across um, uh, co the COVID pandemic impact and how to return to opening art centres. So we sat uh, down together and we planned an information session. It was a two hour session and it comprised a set of um, contributions from people who are in the business of programming work and um, presenting work, maybe commissioning work like Mark O'Brien from Axis spoke, Neil Murray from the Abbey, Lorraine May from Cork Midsummer. And then we approached independent artists who are making work in a range of different ways across different practices. And they talk to us about the importance of um, supports from different organizations that they've had over the years. But also they were really interesting in terms of their ingenuity about finding funding, and uh, not only through the kind of the standard arts council, local, local authority mechanisms, but also looking at funding opportunities that you could say are outside the arts sector. So things like Rory O'Donovan uh, in working in Cape Clear, a choreographer and curator, works with his local co-op um, who will play a very big part because, you know, it's all about island life and they, whether it's arts or fishing, you know, there is this symbiosis between um, the, the, the people living on that island. So um, others then were talking about generating money through um, health authorities for a nursing home care project. That was Maisie Lee. Others talking about accessing funding through maybe the Science Foundation. Um, so it made us really realise, and the 170 pr participants or uh, attendees, wow. that there are lots and lots of different ways that we can make work together, collaborate and access resources, be it money or in-kind supports. But ultimately it comes down to have you got a really good idea in the first instance and have you got some kind of c clarity around what it is you want to do. And that if you've got that clarity, then it helps to unlock the partnerships, the networks, the supports and, and, and the funding. Obviously, now we're going through a bit of a change and we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, what changes have come into your work, Jane, due to COVID-19? Um, well, like like everybody else, I, I, I live in Galway and um, I work from a bedroom upstairs. Um, and 
I haven't seen my workmates uh, for four months, uh, but we we have a very you know introduced a new working methodology. So we have uh, a daily meeting to plan work schedules and to identify what needs to be done and who's doing what. Um, I actually feel that I'm busier in the past uh, four months uh, th than I was for the previous four months um, because you have to be a lot more fleet of foot and nimble in terms of responding to things. Um, and you need, I think you, you're also doing not only the professional work, but there's also an element of pastoral care that comes into it. That may have been more so than in, in the past, because you know the primary thing in this is that we need to make sure everybody's okay, and it's not just yeah. about looking after people's professional needs, but actually connecting with people and talking to people and just checking in on people is really important. So, you know, we have done a lot of contacting of artists that have worked with us over the last uh, eight or nine years, just calling to see, you know. Is there anything we can do? Um, you know, even help, like talking to people about in the beginning, accessing the payment, you know, do you know how to do it? How might you be able to access the payment? Do you qualify for the payment? And then, of course, introducing a couple of sessions we did online with the uh, extre extremely generous and knowledgeable Peter Daly, who has uh, guided uh, many, many artists through the kind of the labyrinth of the puck payments and whether they qualify or don't. Um, so, you know, there's the working in isolation, but being part of a major community online, which is, uh, you know, everybody's had to adjust to. Um, I miss in meetings being able to read people's body language, um, being able to kind of you know, see the nuance in people's expressions uh, on Zoom. You can't yeah. watch everybody at the same time. So, oh, no. um, you know, I, it reminds me all the time, you can't lose that human touch. Uh, it's harder to read between the lines on Zoom than it is, um, than it is in person. Yeah. Um, I miss my standing desk. So my posture has gone to the dogs over the past <laughs> over the past four months because I'm I'm six foot tall, so that doesn't that doesn't help. So um, I'm I'm um, I've adjusted. You know, it's been fabulous being in Galway yeah. all the time rather than commuting every week. What a treat! Yeah. Having, yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Uh, despite the fact no festivals, you know. Galway in July has been very strange without the Film Fla and the Galway International Arts Festival and so on. But um, what has changed, I suppose, is physically we're working in a very, very different way. Um, creatively, I think we're, you know, in the beginning it was hard for people sometimes to be creative because of the uncertainty, but I think people are finding a rhythm a bit more now. Um, I think we are kind of looking out for each other a bit more. Uh, I'm very hopeful that the kind of conversations that have opened up between the sector and government, between the extraordinary work that NCFA has done and the listening in the government at the moment, and also the Arts Council um, is uh, really been opening its, its, its doors in terms of listening to what people are saying and is talking to people. I hope and imagine that, you know, with the, the new leadership, uh, both in the department and in the Arts Council, I think that uh, it augurs very well for us to keep the channels open beyond the immediacy of, of COVID and maybe find new ways of doing things, you know, streamline things. Yeah. Um, because it's it's hard, you know, it's hard for artists uh, as it is. It is. And if Absolutely. I could say one... I, I just one thing is that I think that the, the key learning from this is that the arts sector and the culture sector was on its knees before the pandemic. It was, you know, disgracefully underfunded. Um, artists were, you know, working for very, very poor and inconsistent remuneration. So the, the pandemic has drawn attention to that. But it doesn't mean that one injection of 20 million euro is going to resolve that. It needs to grow significantly from here. With regards to funding, sometimes applying for funding and opportunities can feel like a huge job in itself. Do you have any suggestions for artists to build applications into their practice? 
sometimes it is a case of try, try and try again. Um, and we we would often, you know, we would have kind of information sessions for artists when there's a, you know, funding round coming along, like maybe uh, the project grants will be coming up in, uh, if they come up this month. Sometimes it's very useful for artists to talk to other artists and we would facilitate these discussions where we might ask somebody who's applied three or four times before they were successful to come and talk to artists who are starting out to talk about, you know, what the learning is, you know, you know, why, why do you, why do you get money or why do you not get money? I mean, I'm always coming back to the whole thing about what is your idea? What is it you want to do? I've seen a lot of people apply for um, money because they feel they have to apply for money um, when a round comes up, but actually they don't have the right idea or it doesn't, the idea they have doesn't fit the criteria. So sometimes artists and put, put themselves through a huge amount of work and uh, pain, actually, to construct applications that just aren't really fit for purpose at the time because it, the, the artist themselves isn't entirely clear what it is they want to do. So we would very much say to people, get to know yourself and what you do as well as you possibly yeah. can and learn learn how to talk about your work so that if you know if you have an idea to do something learn how to talk about it because you're going to have to translate talking about it into fitting it into a word count on a form and sometimes people will yes. sit down and they kind of say i i, I can't articulate my my uh, project in this very restricted way so we would we would be very clear with people look forget about the application for the moment just learn how to talk about yourself as an artist, talk about your practice, talk about the projects you want to do, talk about your collaborators and try to imagine explaining that to somebody vocally, you know, verbally. And then does it, does, you know, t try it out with people and do they think it's a good idea? Do you sound convincing? And then you can get assistance in terms of translating it into, you know, the written word. Because not all, not all of us are good at writing applications. Like I would be good at yeah. writing an application, but I couldn't direct a show to, to save my life, you know. Somebody who, <laughs> who is yeah. a fabulous director isn't necessarily yeah. going to be a great application writer. So there's, there's, a, yeah. it, there's a real, it, it's very onerous on artists to be expected to translate their their ideas sometimes into the written word and i hope in time there may be different mechanisms for seeking funding that there may be more you know after shortlisting that maybe artists will be invited for interview or for demonstration or practice rather than it all being uh, relying on online forms because i think sometimes artists talk amazingly about their work but can't always write it down. So know your yeah. work, talk about it, learn how to talk about it. It's like pitching. And then also, you know, yeah. if you're starting off, start with the local authority arts office jobs, uh, sorry, funds. There are some great opportunities there, bursaries. They may not be massive amounts of money, but you generally find that your arts officer will be very well disposed to talking to you about the work because they want to promote and support artists working in their area. Um, and then when it comes to, you know, the, the, the more complex ones like the project grants and the bursaries, uh, make sure that you're just planning as far ahead as possible. You know, talk to your local venue or festival. Don't ring them up two days before the application's due and ask them for a letter of support. Get to know people. I suppose put in the heavy lifting on it long before you have to actually write the application so that you're yeah. you're ready when that comes. But planning, there is probably a lot. You probably see a lot of last minute applying, do you, Jane? Do you see a lot of people like uh, submitting yeah. it, you know, a minute before five o'clock on a Friday? There's probably yeah. a panic um, in the last yeah. couple of days. Give yourself plenty of time. I mean, we will, we, I, you know, sign up or, or follow ITI on Twitter or Facebook. And we are, we always kind of promote the deadlines as far in advance as we can. Um, and then we, we do offer support for people making applications. Sometimes we do group information sessions like we did for the Next Generation Award. Uh, 
the last time and some of those attendees were successful I'm delighted to say and um, so we sometimes Brilliant. we do group ones and then we will do follow up with participants in those to support them with the detail of their own application um, but I think that the, the trick is plan it because the Arts Council introduced um, uh, additional paperwork and supporting material into their application uh, requests around memos uh, of understanding from venues and letters of support from venues because people were ringing up at four o'clock on the day asking a venue, will you support me, will you send me an email? But it's become more complex now, so you need to plan. and. You know, there's no point putting yourself through hours upon hours, sometimes like two weeks of work for no, for no remuneration to realise that you've, you've, you've submitted it and there's a piece of information missing and it's deemed ineligible or you wait yes. 12 weeks to be told you didn't get it. So uh, just yes. plan, talk to people, come and talk to Irish Theatre Institute about planning for an application. There are some key tips um, we have a we have a sheet of tips for um, people who want to make applications. So, just talk to people, but know how to talk about your work. That's the most okay. important thing. Yeah, absolutely. So within that uh, frame, you know, of talking about funding and particularly for for young artists. Now, I'm going to focus on. Um, yeah. How should they structure their year, Jane? Um. I, I would suggest that they structure not one year, but they think of in try try to think in two year, eighteen month, two year, three year cycles if you can. Okay. Get, try to get used to thinking beyond the next project, um, because okay. what it's a bit like the second album syndrome. You know, you you can work, you can have a great idea for a project, and you can go apply, you can make it, and you do it, and then it's what do I do next? So it's, you've got to try and think in a greater, uh, you know, time frame than just a 12 month period or to think in terms of funding cycles. So if you're making a project that you say you were making something, it's September now, you're making something for the Dublin Fringe in t September 21. You should really be thinking about 2022 as well, because if you're, say your project's really successful, in the fringe in 21. You don't want to just leave it at that. You want to build a platform out of that that might allow you to tour it in 2022, to maybe tour it nationally, yes. internationally, to make sure that the right people get to see it. At the same time, you're planning your next project, your next application, so that you get some momentum going in your career. Because focusing all yes. your energy on one event, one project, it's like you're you're you go from a standing start the next time. So build momentum. Yes. Try to think in two or three year cycles. It sounds a bit ridiculous, maybe when you might have money for one no. project or you might have money for none. But if you can get into the pattern or the habit of thinking long term, then it's going to make it yes. easier to attract collaborators, to um, uh, build relationships with venues and festivals, many of whom program you know a year, two years, three years ahead. And if you want to do yes. anything internationally you have to be thinking in a kind of a three year cycle. So move beyond the 12 months into the into the longer term. So what, uh, Jane, you were saying earlier on as well that, you know, try and try again is something that, you know, you would advice that you would give to artists. Now, if an artist feels that they're not getting anywhere, right, and they have, they've gone through the funding application process several times, they feel a bit disillusioned, they have all these fantastic ideas, but they're not getting anywhere. What what advice can you give them and how yeah, how can they go about making things better for themselves? That's a really hard one. And um, I, I actually, I know an artist, a really, really talented, accomplished artist who's, who has applied for maybe, uh, maybe three, if not four, uh, has got funding from some sources, but not from Arts Council. And that that disillusion it does uh, sit in. Um, and in, in that instance, it was a kind of, kind of changing the modus operandi, you know, to see what is it, you know, looking back on the on the applications and saying, is there something, 
is there is there something here that we're not we're not just do, we're not doing right not describing ourselves properly not just not hitting the mark properly um and sometimes it is sometimes it, it it's actually about moving away from the 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 maybe the people who who advise you normally and get new fresh eyes right. on it um okay uh, go in and talk to the uh, arts council if it's the arts council uh, see if you can get a meeting with the the the, ad the advisor or the department head and say look what you know i'm interested in feedback what am i doing wrong am i doing something wrong um and generally in in the long term if you kind of stop reflect talk to people more and and accept observations that may appear as criticism but constructive criticism um then you you know there's a good chance that you might be able to recalibrate your style of application making and you might get lucky now the other thing to say is that not everybody is a is a is a fantastic artist so not everybody is going to get funded yeah and the reality is that in some cases people will get refused time and time again and it could be that simply the proposition the ideas are just not good enough and that's yeah. really okay. really hard and that's a very hard conversation for anybody to have with somebody who wants to make their career in the arts um but sometimes it takes us time to get older and a bit more self aware and we kind of end up moving in a different direction but sometimes it's just as i said earlier Jane is that yeah. something that the Irish Theatre Institute or the Arts Council does where they reach out to somebody who has applied several times and sits them down and says, you know, we we have noticed you have applied, um, but these are the reasons. Is there, yeah, have they ever reached, have you guys ever reached out to anyone in that capacity? Um, the Arts Council won't do that. That, that. that isn't their job, in fairness, to, to do that. Yeah. They're open. Anybody can apply. It's not for them to say who or yeah. who should or shouldn't. So, but in our case, we may have had, we're never going to tell somebody, look, you're, you know, you're never going to, you could never say to somebody, you're never going to make it because artists are multitaskers. You know, yes. like you, you have somebody who really, really wants to make it as an actor, but it, the reality is that they could be a fabulous playwright. And we have seen that where people have, started as actors and want to want to write work to be an actor for them to perform in themselves and you realize actually they're really really good actors but somebody else should be performing their work and mm -hmm. you know so sometimes it just takes um a bit of kind of self-discovery for people to realize that actually this is not the thing that is my strength this is and you yes. know you can facilitate those kind of conversations with people, but but Irish Theatre Institute would never be, uh, we would never uh, advocate that we would be uh, advise people not yeah. to pursue a particular. Or just, you'd line never of work. discourage anyone. Yeah, you'd never discourage. N not anyone at all. From being not not yes. at all. We would yeah. we would say to somebody if if they're making uh, an application and they bring it to us for advice and uh, feedback, we might say you know, that doesn't meet the criteria. This isn't this isn't something we believe is going to get over the line because you don't have this and you don't have that or it's just not fully cooked yet. So we we would say that and that's really to um support them and make make a really better application the next time round. But ultimately people yes. make their own decisions and we're yeah. here to support and encourage and help develop, but we're not in the business of telling people what or what not to do. Well, that all of that advice is hugely helpful. I'm sure there's many people watching out there that are, are encouraged from, from that advice as well, Jane. So thank you for that. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the 20 million euro extra funding uh, that yeah. was given to the Arts Council. Uh, what are your hopes for that funding, Jane? Well, we know where the money is going. We know that the money is going to go into uh, stabilisation funds for arts organisations that are in very precarious positions. 
um, in order to ensure that they will be able to survive and recover. And um, we already saw this week the announcement that the Gate Theatre won't be opening until uh, middle of next year. And I, I kind of wish them all the very best with that. Um, and that's an example of, you know, stabilisation funds needed even for very established organisations that have been here for, you know, um, nigh on 100 years in, in the Gates case. Um, then we'll have money that's going to go into some capacity building programs, which will help people uh, to to better learn how to maybe deliver on digital platforms. And then the ones that kind of particularly interest me in terms of how they roll out are the next round of project funding awards. Uh, the awards open uh, for application on the 11th of August, I think, and close on the 10th of September. And the uh, Director of the Arts Council, Maureen Kennelly, said at the session we had with Theatre Forum on Friday that um, there will be significantly increased funding for project grants this time round, uh, with some of that money coming from the 20 million. So that's very encouraging. And I'd be saying to artists and makers and arts workers, uh, start planning those now. You know, you have a month to make those applications. So start working now and get all your ducks in a row um, so that you can make the best application you possibly can. There are also going to be commissions. Um, and these, again, are ones that I think are particularly important because this is money that will go directly to artists, where artists across yeah. the different art forms will be commissioned to uh, compose, write, you know, to make new work. And those commissions will be largely placed, uh, applied for by art centres, festivals, production companies, etc. But there's nothing stopping an artist approaching any of those organisations with really strong ideas to say, would you be interested in commissioning me and making an application uh, with, you know, with me as the commissioned artist um, and you make the application. So there is money that will be going to artists and there will be money to make new work and there'll be money that's going into organisations to stabilise them and to help them survive so that they're there to facilitate the making of that work for the artists in the future. Um, but it's this is an injection of 20 million. I want to see, you know, like we want the budget at 100 million to, uh, to start yes. with and then for it to grow yes. incrementally so that artists yes. can, as I said, start to plan uh, further ahead. I'd love to see artists being, you know, 50,000 euro bursaries being made available for artists so that they can plan and work on their practice over two years rather than, or three years rather than over, you know, a six month or seven month period. Um, I'd like us to be more in line with some of our European counterparts where the per capita spend on the arts is far greater than it currently is. And I'd like, um, I'd like the arts and culture sector in this country to be recognised for, for what it brings, for what it does in terms of the, um, the attraction from, it, it attracts foreign direct investment. I know that from living in Galway, where firms set up here because of the cultural offering. Um, I would I, I would like to see the, a career in the arts being something that people are, are encouraged to apply for or aspire to, yes. sorry, rather than it be something that um, our parents uh, are asking us, even when we're as old as I am, saying, but what do you really do? And, you know, yeah. why didn't you stick to the teaching? I want it to be respected as a profession, as a life, as a contribution to the nation in the same way that every other profession in this country or every other type of work in this country is and not to be held up as um, just a kind of a, 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 a cultural brokering tool to attract investment yes. and to promote Ireland abroad. Um, I want artists to be respected and I want people in schools to think of it as a, a real opportunity for their future, a career in the arts. Yeah. And it's nice to hear that, you know, alongside, you know, keeping um, Irish theatre companies and buildings going, that there is also money being put into new work. Um, yeah. You know, that's nice, uh, hopeful to hear um, as well. So thank you for that, Jane. So what are your hopes for the Irish uh, art sector after coronavirus, when things get um, back to normal? Yeah, I suppose... Um, I suppose what I was talking about in, in, in kind of what I just said, you know, that that the arts um, is is 
is funded to the level that it deserves to be funded, that the arts are, are placed firmly within the education uh, system and that um, it becomes, you know, I look at I look at countries in Europe and I, you know, I look at France and I look at the Netherlands and uh, I look at Germany as well to some extent. And the culture piece is part of the three legged stool. You know, it's you usually yes. have kind of education, um, kind of education, science and the arts or something like that. Or, you know, that, that the arts are, are part of the three legged stool in the European society that have yes. an equal role in propping up and con contributing to society as as um, the education sector or the economic sector. So I, I really would like to see over the life of the next government and under the directorship of the new um, uh, Maureen Kennelly as the new director of the Arts Council, that uh, talking with the arts sector, that we can learn from what happened in a pandemic, that it took a pandemic to expose how fragile our sector is and that yes. harnessing the energy and the creativity and the professionalism and the expertise that is in the art sector, that it yes. is something that we as a sector, along with the Arts Council, along with the government across departments, can collectively uh, move forward and work together rather than us complaining about the Arts Council don't do this and us saying the government is that and they saying we're all load of wasters and the Arts Council yes. saying, you know, there's never going to be enough money. That if we could all actually realise we're on the same page here and that took a pandemic yes. to maybe point that out for us and to, sure. to recognise the work of the National Campaign for the Arts. And I have to give a yeah. shout out to the steering committee there who, while they were also trying to steer their own organizations and manage their own independent careers through a pandemic, invested all their time and energy and brought the issue front and center and contributed enormously to the, uh, to the release of the, that additional funding uh, along with the Arts Council and the, the Special Committee in the Arts Council. So if we could learn to stop complaining from here on and see we're all, we're all in this together and that yes. Artists need to be respected and trusted in what they do, that they know what they're doing and that there is an infrastructure in the country that can support that and we can thrive rather than, as I said earlier, expect artists to live on the clippings of tin and then we go flying the flag for how fabulous Irish arts is when people are trying to work out, can they afford to um, pay the next month's rent? Um, that's a that's what I want in a post COVID uh, yes. Irish arts world. Well, I couldn't think of a better and stronger note to finish our chat on, Jane. That was, uh, you know, that was yeah, fantastic. And I yeah, I heartily agree with everything that you've said. And I'm sure most of our listeners and watchers, uh, viewers out there, um, will will be agreeing with you as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. It has been hugely informative. Um, thank you. Um, and yeah, we'll all be getting busy now with applications and hopefully looking at how to approach them with new eyes, fresh eyes. Yes, and go go on to the Irish Theatre Institute.ie website and you'll find how to access our services and keep an eye out for the Theatre Forum and ITI information sessions that will be happening. So um, oh, come and talk to us. Kelly, thanks Fantastic. a million. And, and sure, yeah, thank you. Thank you very keep, much as well, Jane. Keep up we'll, the good we'll work, sure you and your team. Uh, thank you very much. We will. Right. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.